So now that we know really well how to work with the z distribution, the time has come to work with other distributions, other normal distributions. Oh, sorry, that got all smudgy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to work with distributions that don't have 0 and 1 as their mean and standard deviation. It's all right. It doesn't actually really change the difficulty that much. It just makes things slightly more trickier. Okay, so we're going to assume that x is normally distributed. We're going to find the following. So the mean is 2200, the standard deviation is 200, and we want the percentile rank of 2100. So 2200 is here. The standard deviation, which is the inflection point, which is right there, is at 200 away. So 2100 is right about there. So you just have to be able to kind of eyeball where things are. That's the important piece. Oh, that looks like too many zeros. Hold on, let me write that better. So 2100. Now percentile rank, we learned before, that's the percentage below. We learned that in chapter three, and we had a note about it about three pages before this. So it's the percentage below. We learned that in section 3.4. Okay, so that means that I'm going to shade to the left. It's important to know which direction to shade, of course, because that's how I'm going to figure out what I'm doing in StatCrunch, right? Okay, so now if we look at our technology table, let's think about this. We're not in the top two anymore, because the top two, one and two, we're talking about Z scores. They had zero and one as their standard deviation, which we don't have. So we're in three. We're going to find the area percent probability from an X value, right? So it's asking us to find the percentile rank given an X value, 2100. So we're going to put mean and standard deviation, mu and sigma, into for those values, and then we're going to tell it the x value in StatCrunch. Okay, so let's grab StatCrunch <laughs> one more time. Um, sorry. Okay, so the mean. The mean is, oh, let me just remind everybody, stat calculators normal is where I'm getting this. And it always does 0 and 1 by default. So if you're not using 0 and 1, if you're not doing a z-score, you'll have to change them. So I'm going to change it to 2200 and 200. That's my mu and my sigma, my mean and standard deviation. And then I know that the x value I have is 2100, and I want to shade to the left, so I want a less than. And then I click Compute. And notice the graph it's creating matches the graph that I've got, which is great. right? It's working out like I think it should. So probability that x is, and this time it is an x. It's not a z. right? This really is x. Is less, is less than 2100 is 0 0.3085, which should look familiar to you because we already ran into that probability. That's the giraffe probability from the end of section 7.1. Now, there's one key to this, though, is that we, and we learned this a couple pages ago as well, with percentile ranks, we need to round to the nearest whole number using regular rounding. And there's also a reminder of what percentiles are. So we got to make a note that we need to round. So note, round. So this would be P.31, right? Or P31, sorry, that's how we, we don't do the decimal point. I'm sorry, I forgot. So 31, which is the 31st percentile. Either way, you want to write it. That's the answer for that one. And again, I'm getting 31 because the 8 rounds the 0 up. We round to the nearest whole number for the percentile. All right, that wasn't too bad. So then let's go over here. So if the mean is 75 and the sigma is 8, so the first thing I'm going to do is change 75 and 8 in my mean and standard deviation because I know I'm going to need it for this problem. They want the area under the normal curve to the right of 90. So let's think. Here's 75 right here. I know that this inflection point is 8 away, which would be about 83. As a matter of fact, exactly 83. You don't have to put it in. It's just kind of a 90 is over here. 90 is even further along. So we're really talking about that little bitty area right there. Right, that's what we're looking for. 
Okay, well, I'm going to put 75 and 8 in, and I want to go greater than, because it said to the right. So greater than, and I want to put 90 in. And press Compute, and there we have it. And again, that picture matches just like we think it should. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 90 equals 0 0.0304. And there we have it. Now that one's the answer. I didn't circle it over here because it wasn't technically the answer. The answer is actually this bit down here, right, when we, when we do the percentiles. But for this one, this is the answer. All right, let's do some more. <laughs> so, um, okay, new problem. They've got the mean is 80, the standard deviation is 12. And we're talking about the proportion of values that fall between 67 and 87. Okay, so if the mean is 80 and a standard deviation is 12, that means that this value right here is at about 92. So if that's 92, 87 is in here somewhere. So there's 87. 67 is a little further away than that. 67 is over here. And it says it wants between those values. So that's good. We want to shade in between them then. Okay, so let me switch my normal calculator then. So I have an 80 and a 12 typed in, but I'm not doing a standard anymore. I'm doing a between. So let me switch it to between. I know the x values. I know the x value on the left is 67 and the x value on the right is 87. So I put those two values in and I press enter and the picture matches. Right? The picture looks like I think it's going to. And then I just have to write this down. The probability that 67 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 87, right? which is right in here, p parentheses 67, and then there's that less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 87, which is basically saying x is between those two, is 0 0.5808. And that's the answer. Now, they wanted a proportion, so we could write it as 58.08%. If you want to write the proportion as a percentage, that's fine. All right, now how is that different from letter D? So letter D has this word in there that says or. Everybody see that? Think about what it's saying. So you've got 180 down the middle here. 165 is a little bit more than one standard deviation away. It's right here, 165. Because the standard deviation is at 12 away, which would be about 168. So 165 is over here, 200 is over here. Right, not too far, because it's only 20 away, and the standard deviation is worth 12. So where do I shade? And the answer is you don't shade the middle part. I know it seems intuitive that you would, but you don't. Because look at what it's saying. It's saying, I want you to be less than 165, which is over here. Less than 165 means you're to the left of 165. Or greater than 200. I have the or in there because it's disjoint. You can't do both of them, right? So or means you add them up, you join them up. two, oops, that's two separate tails. Another way of saying it is that it's outside. That's what we said in the z-score problem um, a couple pages ago. We said it was outside these two z-scores. This is the area that's outside of those two x values. Okay, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, the answer is we're going to do it the same way we did c, but we're just going to take it away from one. See, the whole curve makes 1. So if I say, okay, 180, 180, and 12, fine, and then I say 165 and 200, that's not my zone. It's the white portion of my zone, right? See this white bit in the middle? The white bit in the middle is what I just found in StatCrunch. It's red in there. So this white bit in the middle is telling me it's 0.8466. Right. It says it right here, 8466 down there in the bottom. Oh, so let me write that. So the probability that 
165 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 200, equals 0.8466. Okay, that's not the answer, but it's real close because we know that the whole curve makes 1. So then to find the bits I'm looking for, all I have to do is take 1 minus 0.8466, and I'll have it. All right, that's what Desmos is good for. Oh, Desmos, tell me what 1 minus 0 0.8466 is. It's 0.1534. There's our answer. Right, so we take the central portion away from 1. Sorry, I should have highlighted that in pink. That's what I did the whole page. All right, that's how to do it in StatCrunch. I'm going to go show how to do this in the TI-84. If you're not using a TI-84, you can just skip ahead and go to the next video. All right, TI-84, folks. So let me get to the TI-84. All right, for the first one, um, again, these are all normal CDF. You can see it on the table because you're doing number three here, and so it's normal CDF, lower and upper. Right? So the lower zones, let me go to normal CDF, the lower edge is negative 1E99 because it's forever this way, negative infinity. So we use negative 1E99 to stand for that. And that E, by the way, I'll just remind you all because that's a mistake people make. It's the double E that's on your comma button. So you have to hit second E to make that happen. And then it's going to stop at 2100. The mean is 22. Oops, 2200. And the standard deviation was 200. So I'm going to paste that in, and there we have it. All right, so then the next one, normal CDF. This one starts at 90, goes to forever. So I have to 1 second comma 99. My mean is 75. My standard deviation is 8. There it is, paste it. All right, down here, these ones are, are nice. <laughs> we like the between ones. They're easy because they don't involve that E99 business. So we're just going to say 67. We're going to say 87. We're going to say 80 and 12. There you have it. And then the last one, you can actually do the exact same thing they did. That's kind of what you have to do. So second distribution. So you're going to say 165. 200, 180, and 12. You'll find the central zone and then take 1 minus that answer. And there you have it. And there's no difference for an old calculator versus a new calculator. For not for normal CDF. They're all the same. It's inverse norm that gets tricky with the old different types of calculators.